Moving on to question number two, an environmental science teacher at a high school with a large population of students wanted to estimate the proportion of students at the school who regularly recycle plastic bottles. The teacher selected a random sample of students at the school to survey. Each selected student went into the teacher's office one at a time and was asked to respond yes or no to the following question. Do you regularly recycle plastic bottles? Based on the responses, a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of all students at the school who would respond yes to the question was calculated as 0.584, 0.816. Okay, part A. How many students were in the sample selected by the environmental science teacher? That's an interesting question. The quickest way is just to go up to the teacher and ask. But just in case you don't know the teacher, let's go another route by looking at this confidence interval for the proportion. And there are two things you can find out from the confidence interval, two values that you can calculate. Two values that you can calculate from this confidence interval. And one is the sample proportion, and the other one is the margin of error. What is going to be the sample proportion? Well, our interval extends from 0.584 to 0.816, and the sample proportion is the value at the center of it. So that's the sample proportion. And the margin of error is the length from the sample proportion to either the left-hand point or the right-hand point. So we have P at the center and two E's going to the left and the right. So how do you find P at? Well, that's just the midpoint. So you do 0 0.584 plus 0 0.816 over 2. And if you plug this in, you should get 0 0.7. And how about the margin of error? Well, the distance, the entire distance of the interval, the entire length of the interval is 0 0.816 minus 0 0.584. And to find the margin of error, you simply divide that by 2. So you're going to subtract this, divide by 2, and you should get 0 0.116. And knowing these, we want to calculate the sample size, how many students were in the sample. So how can we relate the sample size, the sample proportion, and the margin of error? Well, you know the equation for the margin of error. That's g sub alpha over 2 times square root of p hat q hat all divided by n. We know E, we know margin of error, we know P hat, and from that we know Q hat. And do we know Z sub alpha over 2? Yes, we do, because it's 95% confidence interval. So we know Z sub alpha over 2, if you have this memorized, is 1.96. And if you do not have this memorized, that's okay. You can still find it, because you have 95% confidence interval. If you draw the normal distribution, you know the area at the center is 0 0.95. That's telling you the area at the either end, so this end and this end, should be 0 0.05 combined. So area of one of them should be 0 0.025. You can either look this value up to find the z-score of this point, or you can use your TI-84 or 83. TI-84 or 83. You can simply go into inverse norm, inverse normal distribution, to find this z-score. You plug in the area of 0 0.025, mean of 0, and the standard deviation of 1, and you should get negative 1.96. So you know this is negative 1.96, so you know z sub alpha over 2 is 1.96. So we also know z sub alpha over 2, we know p hat, we know q hat, we know e, and we want to find n, and this can easily be done. First, let's divide both sides by g sub alpha over 2. So we have e over g sub alpha over 2 is a square root of p hat q hat over n. Squaring both sides, we get, we get, squaring both sides, we should get e over g sub alpha over 2 squared is a p hat q hat over n. Square root goes away. And to find n, we can take the reciprocal of both sides. When you take reciprocal of both sides, we get g sub alpha over 2 over e squared is n over p hat q hat. That's telling us that sample size n is p hat q hat times g sub alpha over 2 over e squared. And now it's just a matter of plugging in the points. We know p hat is 0 0.7. 
that's telling us that Q hat is 0.3, and we know T sub alpha over 2 is 1.96, and we know margin of error is 0.116, 0 0.116 squared, and when you plug this in and you round up, you should get 60 students. So we know the sample size is 60. That was an interesting question. Let's go on to part B. Given the method used by the environmental science teacher to collect the responses, explain how bias might have been introduced and describe how the bias might affect the point estimate of the proportion of all those students at the school who would respond yes to the question. Well, where is the bias going to come from? Think about this. Let's say you are one of the students and let's say you're a student and you do not recycle. Who does not recycle? Who does not recycle? And the teacher is calling you up. So you go up to the teacher, you go into his office or her office and he or she is going to ask you the question, do you recycle? And you will be like, well, I don't, but I really don't want to admit that because then the teacher is going to think I'm not a responsible student possibly. So maybe you're going to lie, maybe you're going to say just to make yourself look better, you're going to say, oh yeah, I, re I recycle and just exit. So there may be students who do something very similar to that because you're talking to teacher face to face, it's not anonymous. So there is a likely chance that you're going to have response bias. You're going to have response bias which is when you're biased towards a certain response because you want to give an answer that's more acceptable or more favorable. So let's write it down. Some students, some students that do not recycle, that do not recycle, may choose to untruthfully, choose to untruthfully respond when questioned face to face by the teacher, when questioned face to face by the teacher, by the teacher, because, because they do not, they do not want to, want to be perceived, perceived as maybe lacking, maybe lacking, I'm not sure what the word to use, lacking an environmentally friendly habit, an environmentally mentally friendly habit of recycling. So that's the answer to part B. And we also want to write, before we go on, we also want to write how the bias might affect the point estimate or the proportion of all the students at the school who would respond yes, where the yes rate is going to increase because more students, more students than they should, than it should be, than it should be, may respond that they recycle, that they, res that they recycle. So the P hat is going to be larger than it should be. P hat larger than it should be. So that's the answer to part B. Let's go on to part C. The statistics teacher at the high school was concerned about the potential bias in the survey and statistic teacher is going up to environmental science teacher and saying, I got this. To obtain a potentially less biased estimate of the proportion, the statistics teacher used an alternate method for collecting student responses. A random sample of 300 students was selected and each student was given the following instruction on how to respond to the question in private. So when the student is alone, he or she flips a fair coin. And if you get heads, you have to say no. Even if you recycle, even if you recycle, you have to lie, you have to say no. And if you get tails, you have to truthfully respond yes or no. And how is this going to produce a less biased estimate? Well, if you don't recycle, now you're more likely to say no in front of the teacher because the teacher doesn't know if you got heads or tails. So when you say no to the teacher, the teacher doesn't know if you're saying no because you don't recycle or because you got heads even if you recycle. So you're more likely to refrain from going towards the answer yes even if you don't recycle. So there is going to be less bias. We have a pretty smart statistics teacher 
So hopefully you're going to score a five if you're from the school. Part I, what is the expected number of students from the sample of 300 who would be required to respond no because the coin flip resulted in heads? Well, we have 300 students and the expected number of heads, expected proportion of heads should be one half. So our answer is 150 students. That's very easy. Let's go on to part two. The results of the sample showed that 213 of the 300 selected students responded no based on the results of the sample, give a point estimate for the proportion of all the students at the high school who would respond yes to the question. Well, 213 out of 300 said no. So how many said yes? How, what proportion of them said yes? 300 minus 213 is 87, so 87 students said yes. And the only way of saying yes is when you're being truthful, because if you got heads, you have to say no. So the only way you're going to say yes is because if you got tails and you actually recycle, given that we don't have any bias, let's assume that we have no bias in this case, we know all of these 87 people were truthful. So we are assuming that they were not lying, truthful, because we have much less bias than we are supposed to, hopefully. And what's the number of people? What's the number of people that we know? We know to be truthful. We know to be, we know to be honest, to be truthful. Well, we know they are truthful when they got tails and when they got heads, we don't know if they are lying or not. So we have to go by 150 people that got tails because 150 people are going to get tails and 150 are going to get heads in average. So we know our proportion is 87 out of 150.